It's David Griffith and it's um, Shibden Hall and David's a dry stone waller. Um, can you tell us a bit about um, the stone wall that's here? Yeah, this piece of wall that we're looking at the end of is a practice wall. It's a wall in which we get people who haven't walled before to find out a little bit about how a dry stone wall is put together. Dry stone walls mark our landscape in Yorkshire, so it's quite useful if you're going to learn about walls that you and you've seen them in the landscape is to know why they've lasted so long, why they've lasted for hundreds of years. Well, a lot of it is to do with the way that they're built. So we've got a cross section of this training wall and this really is, is the secret behind its the way it's constructed. You'll notice that first of all that the bigger stones tend to go at the bottom of the wall. They tend to be the heaviest, ugliest stones, but they form the footings, the foundations of the wall. And you'll also notice that, in actual fact, there's, there's, there's two sides to it. There's a side, a face on that side, and there's a face on this side. And in between it, there are all these small pieces of stone that go from the bottom of the wall right the way through to the top. This material that's in the middle is the same sort of stone as the stone that's building it, the building stone, but that's called the heartings. So we've got the footings at the bottom, we've got these two sides of the wall, and it's filled in between with the heartings. About halfway up this wall, you'll notice that there's this stone that goes right across it. And what that's doing is tying these two walls together. And that stone is pulling through. It goes through the wall. And when you see those in the landscape, they're placed about a metre apart. And they are the reason why the bottom part of the wall is so sturdy and so strong, because they actually key that to hold it together. And then the wall, you notice that the, the stones now are getting smaller, they're getting thinner as they're getting to the top of the wall. So we've graded the stone, the thickest at the bottom, the thinnest at the top, still filling it. And then the, the two sides at the top of the wall are held together by this piece of stone here, which is called a coat stone. And that spans the wall, it's fairly heavy, and these are put next to each other, tightly together, and they hold the top part of the wall together. They tie that in the same way that the through ties the bottom part of the wall. You'll also notice that it isn't a straight, the, the, the walls are not vertical. They are wider at the bottom, and they're narrower at the top. So they produce a sort of an A shape. And that line, that angle there, is called the batter. So the language of a dry stone wall is footings, heartings, through, coke stones, and batter. And that essentially is how all dry stone walls all over Britain, in lots of parts of the world, are assembled. A double-sided dry stone wall. Now what is interesting about this particular place is that we're in Shipton Hall in Halifax. And if you look around the landscape here, you notice that we're in what in actual fact is the only exhibition of its kind in Britain. There are other exhibitions that have different elements of dry stone walling, but this one has every element that makes up the craft of the master craftsman dry stone walling. So you have pillars and styles, and lunkies, the hole through the wall, archers, corners, estate walls, different styles of coke stones, a sheep fold, a two big self-indulgent cairns that mark the upper part of it, and so on. And today is a special day because this is the first day that we are surveying and marking out. The next stage of the exhibition was put in ten panels of wall which represent all the different types of stone that you will find in Yorkshire, and in that way, the different types of stone affect how each panel of wall will look. Although, in fact, they're all built using the same method. Brian? Yeah. Uh, I'm standing in front of what we call an estate wall. So every piece of stone that's behind me here in this picture has been cut by hand. And so the pillars behind me have all been cut and shaped in that particular way. But this is the feature that we're, the technical feature that we're looking at. This is called a cheek end or a wall head. It's where a wall stops and it has to be secure, obviously with 
uh, stock or whatever walking past it, it doesn't want to be easily dismantled. So it's built in a particular way with stones tying it together, but this piece of stone, which is hand cut again on the top, is called a hog's back. So that's been cut out of a rectangular piece of stone and it fits exactly on the top and is very weighty and very secure and helps to hold all that together. That's called a cheek end. In the exhibition is uh, is made up of, of styles, styles that you walk through or step over when you're out in the countryside. And there are three that characterise the main types of styles that you see in the Yorkshire and the English, uh, in English landscape. The one on, on my right down there is called a squeeze style, for obvious reasons. The one that I'm standing on, and I'm going to walk over, is called a step over style, where the through stones that were described earlier on go right through the wall, and they're arranged in a comfortable stepping sequence down the wall, huge and secure, and that's a familiar one in the Yorkshire landscape. And then the one behind me is a combination of the two. This is a squeeze style and a step style, so we call it a step through style. So we've got a squeeze style, step over style, step through style, style sequence. The two holes through the wall on either side of me are called, well, they're called 17 or 18 different things all over Britain. But in Yorkshire we call them either a, a lunky, or a hog hole, or a cripple hole. And they allow the passage of sheep particularly to go through from one pasture to another. This one is an arch, so another bit of dry stone walling craft is to be able to construct an arched hole, and this one a more familiar rectangular, a simpler one, but uh, another lunky that allows the passage of cheap from one piece of This sequence in the exhibition is, um, it displays all the different styles of coat stones that tie the top of the wall together, again that you'll find in the Yorkshire landscape. The ones that you see immediately that I'm leaning against are called a buck and doe style. So you've got one stone that's standing upright and a stone that's lying on its side. And if it's repeated, it makes an attractive decorative pattern. And the further you go along the wall, you'll see that there are some cope stones that lean like a pack of cards that's fallen over. Uh, some uh, are a different form of buck and doe style. Um, some of them are random, that means they're different sizes, different heights but they'll still span the wall to tie it together, and so on. So this sequence is the copestone style sequence. This structure is a, is a fold, like a sheep fold. It represents the, the spaces in the landscape where sheep are counted and gathered and dealt with by shepherds. And it's my favourite, favourite space in the whole of this exhibition. It has a, almost a spiritual quality about it. But also, as you look at it, you can see what a beautiful piece of walling this is, of the evenness of the coursing and how it's, it's, there's nothing that breaks this line, this circular line that seems to embrace you. When we put it in and when we built it, we put in these throughs which we allow them to stick out of it so we can make them into seats. And every time I come to Shipton and I walk through the main entrance and I look into the fold, Almost inevitably, there's somebody sitting here quietly, either reading or just resting or watching the children play or play with the stones here. It's a special place. Mm.